and welcome to Clay to Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. It is finally time to reveal this quilt. Before I get to rolling the footage, I just want to give you a heads up. This quilt was about two years in the making, and the footage is a little bit of a mix match of some really old stuff shot on my digital camera and some of the newer stuff because it took that full two years. So I do apologize in advance for some of the wonky footage. But I think it's really important to note the journey of what this piece has gone through since this was pretty much the beginning of this environment. And that all started with the ideas that came from the tiles that then came to the quilt. This is really like the most pivotal piece, I think, of the entire thing because it really was what sort of built the entire environment in the ideas that it came out of. So, um, let's go do this. I'm going to attempt to make a polygon quilt. I've never made one before. The pattern looks insanely crazy. To get myself started, I took out some graph paper and attempted to make a drawing, which then I realized was incredibly ridiculous because here I was with these tiny, tiny little pieces of paper, attempting to use them as a template to draw onto my graph paper. I went onto the computer, used it to make a basic template. After I did that, I numbered all of my polygons on here with the different fabrics that I had planned to use so that I could map out what I was going to need to get a better visual idea, get a full scale on a graph paper so that I could figure out the fabric using these polygon templates. Made myself a little legend after numbering them and figured out how many of each that I need, which ended up being a ridiculous amount. Just this one bit around for one block is 72 orange bits of fabric just for the outside of one block. Yeah, I've got a lot of cutting to do. All right, so I decided this is my number one and that means that I need 144 of them for the outer edge and then I'm going to need another 12 for the inside center. I am attempting to now use the Cricut. I don't know why I didn't think of it first. It's new to me and I often forget I even have the thing. I haven't had it for that long and actually have not used it for this purpose yet. So this will be a first for me. I am going to attempt to cut and draw for the seam allowance. So first I'm just going to cut up some squares so that I can mount it to my mat board that will go into the cutter and we'll see how this goes. I actually initially buy this thing to use for cutting wood templates, which the maker does cut. Now that I have been doing a lot more quilting, remembering I have this thing to use for it. So a big part of the reason why I've actually invested in this machine is after doing years and years of making stuff, the nerves in my hand are actually pretty shot. Anything that I can invest in that still allows me to feel like I'm still making it from the ground up without too much of technology interfering, I guess, in a way. So I'm gonna go ahead and inject the piece here. And then, as I peel this off, I'll just get one corner here so we can... Hello, Booba Man. Look at that. Aha! did all my cutting for me. This worked out well. I'm gonna go ahead and iron the rest of the fabric and cut up my pieces. Seriously, that took me about three days to cut 2,500 hexagons on the Cricut. Had I done that by hand, I probably would be here till next year. Here is what my basic pattern of one of the squares is gonna look like. So just laying it out to see what's gonna happen. And now I'm gonna move on to pinning up some of these pieces so that I can then take it to the sewing machine. When I stitch these, I'm going to start my stitch at the drawn on seam allowance and end at the other end because I'm going to need the flexibility to pull this up when I go to do the other seam. Ready? We got all of those sides attached. Now I can go ahead and add this next bit on. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this one on the same way I did the rest of that bit. Here's my last round of pinning on these few and now I have to join the orange to orange. It's starting to get a bit confusing. All 
Alright, so that's that edge. Now I'm going to repeat that same process again for the other side. Alright, here we are. This is my first flower pattern done. First of 72. This is that first one up here. I am going to probably spend the next, I'm guessing, about three days making the other 72 of these flower patterns before I can move on and start adding in the whites that fill in. Uh, hopefully I make it through the next three days with my fingers still intact and uh, my sanity still intact. So here we go. I am pretty much just a novice sewer. There's probably a much easier way of doing this, but I am very formulaic. I will figure out tasks with that kind of mentality. This particular method of getting these pieces together worked really well for me. It's found with sewing that there's multiple ways of doing things that it doesn't have to be any one particular way. I will see you in probably two months from now because basically that's how long it took me to sew 72 of the flowers and by the time I put these borders on it's probably about how long it's going to take me. I'm going to go ahead and put in the outside borders on all of these little flowers and then I will be back to do the next step. Two years in, roughly, probably more than two years, I stopped counting. Basically where I am is I have these neutral pattern colors. I have sewed up a cluster of three and what is happening is I am now stitching in those clusters here and here to join two sets together. I am paying very close attention to the orientation of my um, center flower here to make sure that I orient them correctly. I start off with two of the dominant colors facing each other. Then the lighter color is opposite in the next grouping of two and then back to that same color. So I'm having to pay really close attention to the orientation of those things. I'm gonna finish up joining the groups of two and then once those groups of two are finished, I will be stitching a hexagon strip along here. The strip that will go, you know, at the top and the bottom of two sets of these to begin joining my sets together. So that will become the next thing. One, 1500 to go. All right, everybody, it is time for a bit of a chat. Started stitching up my panels. Hopefully you can see that. I realized that this plan is pretty much a king-sized comforter and not a throw. So if I made this, it probably would be way too big for the table, not work as a throw at all. When I originally launched this channel, I had always planned on doing this environment that hopefully you have been watching. I spent many months prepping, started these projects well in advance so that when I did begin to launch the channel, I could hit the ground running. And then the pandemic happened. As you may already know, I pretty much have a full load of teaching. I teach five classes and when the pandemic happened, I had to knock out a crazy amount of videos and then I started this environment. So my hand is completely shot at this point. I am going to dial this quilt back and I will only be doing three of these panels. It's gonna look something more like this with this being yellow on the top, green in the middle, and yellow on the bottom. This is going to become my center block, and I'm going to go in with some solid striping to create a border. It's going to finish off this throw, and it also is going to give my hand an insane amount of relief. The other thing is it's going to be really great to tie in this quilt with the table and then with the striped pieces of furniture that are already going on in the room. So I'm going to go ahead and get to work so that I can get on with finishing this quilt. Working with cats, y'all. Trying to get some sewing done, but gotta wait. Gotta wait, cause he's in control. 
All right, everybody, that is a wrap for this video. Here is the quilt done and completed. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already, and I hope to see you soon.